Welcome closer. היי רבאלי, היי רותחר, דוקטור רותחר ווס, אבולושיונרי ביולוגי, שלווייזרסט, אתה יכול לראות פה, אתה אוהב סיינס גאי, פורגוט אקדמי, ועכשיו אנחנו נראים עוד סיינס וידאו. ואני עובד בנטורל היסטוריה מוזיאום של נטרלנדס, שקוראים נטורליס, ואנחנו יש לנו אחד מהם הכי גדולים של טי-רקס בעולם. אבל היום אנחנו רוצים לדבר על ג'ורסיק ג'ורסיק פארק. Good segue, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. <laughs> setting this professionals here and setting this up perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so Jurassic Park, basically, humans brought back extinct animals from the past yep. for our enjoyment to have a park, a theme park. They took some DNA from a mosquito that beat a dinosaur and he was like uh, saved in some uh, stuff that caped him. Uh, so, uh, ember? Is That's petrified it. resin from pine tree and then they mixed uh, the DNA of the of the dinosaur that was in the mosquito with all kind of other stuff mixing it and voila dinosaur <laughs> could we find a DNA of a dinosaur in a mosquito extract it then use it that's not now no so no that's not bad. why? Uh, it's, it's, it's not in the movie. It's, it's too long ago, you know, like uh, the, the age of the dinosaurs ended about 65 million years ago. Okay. For the preservation of even fragmented DNA, we're more talking about tens of thousands of years. So that's mm. a couple of orders of magnitude mm. difference. So all the DNA would have been digested, broken down, mm. fragmented. Okay, yeah. so we can wrap up the Science Jurassic Park video. Okay, what about the other science part about mixing the DNA with some other DNA? Could that uh, So that's work? actually a very good uh, plot device in the story. Okay. To solve the problem of the fragmented DNA, they used DNA of amphibians. Okay. Amphibians actually, under some circumstances, can reproduce asexually. It's Which called, means? It's called parthenogenesis. And so it means that a female can have offspring without there ever being a male. Wow. And so really in the story scary. they didn't think of that and so they only create female dinosaurs thinking that mm. this would be a way to control procreation but then nature finds a way. <laughs> I think it's like the dinosaurs, feminazis, <laughs> they don't men. <laughs> they don't need men anymore. <laughs> the strong independent dinosaurs. This, this yes. is the scary part of the story, not the dinosaurs. Just like females not needing males. <laughs> the world is the world is weird creatures and there are this is a series of movies and books and toys. We just love some dinosaurs. Maybe because we weren't responsible for them going away. We didn't kill them. Yeah. That was like natural disaster. Yeah, there's no, no guilt there. No guilt no, there, no, just no. like fun, good yes, fun. Yeah. Like you had your time and yeah, then... Yeah, they, they turned. Uh, they uh, died because a very large uh, rock fell from the sky <laughs> and uh, landed uh, by on the edge of the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico mm -hmm. and caused a sort of, let's say, nuclear winter type event. And so the only dinosaurs that actually survived, because some did, ah. are what we now refer to as Jews. birds. Birds. <laughs> <laughs> that was very silly. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> right? Birds, Bir birds, 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 birds. Birds, birds are birds are feathered dinosaurs. So the smaller ones. We also know that others actually were scaly. So there's this thing that was found recently called zoo which you can see the complete outline of the body of this dinosaur and it's incredibly detailed wow. it's really cool so so if we want to de-extinct the dinosaurs wouldn't it be better to go through birds so actually yes so going through birds makes more sense and it, there's even a little bit of work done in that field experimentally okay so not necessarily just to try to create dinosaurs <laughs> but to try to understand Okay, what's the genetics behind the development of the beak versus the jaw? Okay. And so they did this experiment on chicken embryos. As you can see, there's like the, the chicken beak shape, the, and then on the right there's like the jaw shape. And so with this mutation, actually it's sort of in between. So are there 
other animals that are not from that long ago that we could maybe de-extinct? I guess it, it depends on what we try to achieve with the de-extinction. In okay. Jurassic Park, they just want to give sort of, they want to create entertainment. Yes. Uh, and so they want something that looks like a dinosaur. And it's actually right. kind of a synthetic organism, mm -hmm. right? It's spliced together from different right. things. The longtime enemies of the show, the Nazis, <laughs> thought it would be very interesting to try to recreate animals that look like the aurochs. So the aurochs okay. was a, a kind of a giant cow, actually the ancestor of the domesticated cows. Okay. Last one went was shot in a in a Polish forest in the Bielowicza, I think. Why? Uh, Why was it shot? During the hunt. Um, uh, in the 17th century, ah. I think. So, no, so Nazis not didn't shoot it? No. But the Nazis thought, wouldn't it be nice if we have something that looks like right. that? Yeah, like a Nazi cow. Right. Uh, the bulls that are used in bullfighting okay. in Spain, they kind of look a bit like the aurochs and there's some other cow breeds and so with okay. uh, a lot of crossbreeding to make it look kind of like authentic. Really? So that mm -hmm. is more like a simulacrum, right? So it's like you try to cre recreate something that looks like it, just like they did in Jurassic Park. It's not actually genetically, right, you're not right, stepping right, 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 in right, the right, same right. river twice, right? right? You're just like making something look like it. Right. Like maybe we can actually clone with some genetic engineering recently mm. extinct animals like the marsupial wolf, the thylacine, ah, wow. or like uh, wow. a, a recently extinct birds. And so in placental mammals, there's a really complicated interaction between the mother and the embryo, right. which is probably not, th that's, that's very uh, orchestrated in a way that probably is not going to work across species boundaries. Maybe in an egg, like with an extinct bird, mm. maybe, maybe with marsupials, it might be a bit easier. Okay, so who gets to decide all that? Like Jurassic Park, that's like a private venture. He wants to make money, doesn't ask for permission, no regulation in with regards of uh, the extincting the dinosaurs, which could be a threat to humanity. So all these, all these, all these scientific progress, if not regulated, could be very dangerous for everybody. Like you don't sure. know what could be the result of bringing back this uh, very interesting looking wolf. A creature of the future made from pieces of the past. Ladies and gentlemen, please be warned. This is the perfect blend of the two most dangerous creatures that have ever walked the earth. Okay, so in Jurassic Park, the only uh, mechanism to control the situation is like, a dude with a switch. Right. Newman. Right. Yes. <laughs> so Newman! <laughs> right. so, so if someone would want to build up a park, not necessarily a dinosaur, but build a park today, would he have to go through something to get it uh, done? It, it depends a little on the funding uh, mechanism, but if let's say... If he say has his own money? No, uh, then it depends on which country you are. Okay, uh, you elaborate. Can do, you can do more in uh, China than in Europe, for example, with just gene editing, like, oh, let's make uh, little pigs or th stuff like that. So, for example, if at a public university you wanted to do experiments like that, there would be ethics committees and internal review mm. boards and all sorts of impediments to uh, this, this playing okay. around. But if I want to play around, like in my house, I don't want to build a park with huge uh, aurochs, whatever. Just like want to create a few cells and try some shit. Can I get whatever shipment uh, of that from Amazon? I don't know. And just actually, uh, so actually, yes. <laughs> so there's this new hobby. Um, okay. Synthetic <laughs> biology, where okay. you can order these kits online no, with different sort of genetic modules that you can splice together to make like an interesting yeast that has a slightly different metabolism, breaks down this or that. And maybe it's... And so people can just, on the, on the kitchen counter, you can make new organisms. And what uh, happens if you create something that you shouldn't have created by mistake and something happens? This is just like totally unregulated. Pretty much, yeah. I mean... Uh, you could make pathogens, you know, diseases or things like that. It's, uh... that. In the last century, we amassed a landmark technological power and we've consistently proven ourselves incapable of handling that power. And now we've got genetic power. So how long is it going to take for that to spread around the globe 
And what's going to be done with it? It ain't going to stop with the de-extinction of the dinosaurs. Wow. I think we should just like think before we create something new. Let's just let everybody know what we're doing, and we have to. But there might be okay situations where actually it's done for the common good. We're talking about Jurassic Park. Okay. There's maybe other types of parks that okay. would actually serve humanity. Okay. There's this experiment of this guy. I see only one way. It's necessary to mitigate melting of permafrost. Sergei Zimov has been studying the permafrost for decades. To stop the permafrost from thawing, he has a radical notion to recreate the Arctic of 30,000 years ago. So not a forested area, but more like a grassy tundra, okay. which they argue would actually be good for the global climate. Because forests Why? retain warmth more and like flat land would get a nice shot of frost every winter, so the permafrost would not, I guess, melt. You can either take a bulldozer and bulldoze entire Arctic everywhere, or you can let animals do that themselves. So, and so he has horses. Got, got, just to understand, so beneath the grass, the permafrost would be able to last longer because the ground doesn't absorb the heat versus the forest, which would cause it to melt. That's right. Okay. By disrupting the snow and exposing soil to the Arctic air, the animals keep the permafrost two degrees colder than it would have been otherwise. What do you think? Should we allow people to create parks? We'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Ciao. Bye, Rutger. This was fun. A lot of fun. Thanks. So. Thank you.